Hey guys, how's it going? So we're gonna be doing a little fruit tree spraying today. I'm standing out by our brand new orchard. We just planted nine trees out here. There are two peaches, two apples, two apricots, a nectarine, a pear, and a plum. We're very excited about it. I need to water them today as well. We don't have our irrigation quite set up yet. So the whole point of today's spray is to apply a dormant oil as well as a liquid copper. And what those two sprays will do is help, well the oil will help envelop and smother any overwintering insect eggs. It can also help prevent some things like powdery mildew and, um, and rust. And then there's a liquid copper which helps prevent bacterial blights, leaf curls, which we usually deal with leaf curl in peaches and uh, plums and particular. You might remember my dwarf peach last year had leaf curl, so I'm going to spray that one today as well. And now I'm not sure if this is the same for every area, but we do live in a valley that's full of orchards. And I was able to learn a lot from the orchard owners when I worked down at the garden center, and they always said to do a, a regimen of a three spray regimen. So you do your first spray application of dormant oil and liquid copper in late November once all the leaves have fallen. And then you do your second spray in January sometime, usually on a, just a really nice day. And then your third application is late February, early March, which I'm almost a little bit late for, but they said that this is the spray application that makes the most difference. Like if you can't spray them three times, if you can only spray them once, do the last one. This is what I'm gonna be using today. I've got the All Seasons Horticultural and Dormant Spray Oil, which can be used in season and as a dormant spray application. And then the Copper Fungicide, both of which are labeled for organic gardening, which is how we're keeping it out here. Also got a two gallon pump sprayer here. I've also got a hose end sprayer, which I've showed you in videos before, which is super handy to use if you're using, or uh, spraying rather, um, a lot of trees that are really tall because it sprays really far. Depending on your hose pressure, um, it can spray upwards of 30 feet. So if you've got some tall trees, like it's really handy. And if you've got a really like large amount of things to spray. But since I've got nine little baby trees, the pump sprayer is just perfect. And when we spray, we make sure to just really cover the tree. Like the top sides of the branches, the undersides, the trunks, and maybe even the ground around it, especially when you're dealing with like leaf curl issues, fungal issues, you just wanna thoroughly saturate the area. I also highly recommend that you read the label because the dilution ratio will be different depending on how you're using them and what you're using them on. Like the horticultural oil here, this we're gonna be using at a higher rate because we're using it as a dormant application. Um, you would use less of it in season. And then copper fungicide, I mean, same goes. I mean, it depends on what kind of tree you're, or shrub you're uh, spraying. Uh, so you just wanna make sure you're doing it properly. Today, I'm gonna be using two and a half ounces per gallon of the oil and two ounces per gallon of the copper fungicide. So we're just gonna mix it all up in this sprayer and get to work. detail you can see but um, I just wanted to try to get a little bit closer up so you could see that I saturated the trunk the branches I uh, made sure to target the underside of the branches that's where a lot of things like to overwinter and then I also applied a bit of the spray on the ground around them so that's all there is to it it's a really easy thing to do now it did look very easy and was very easy for me this year in particular and probably for the next few because these trees are so small i mean it took me all of 10 minutes to gather my stuff get out here get the spray mixed and get them sprayed and as the trees grow it'll become a little bit more of a chore but it's just something to remember to do if you want to keep your trees free of disease which most of us do, otherwise what's the point? Keep them free of disease, fungal issues, insect issues. You know, I want to have nice clean fruit when we come out here and pick them, um, and these sprays are, are organic. Again, read the labels because you wanna make sure that you're applying it correctly, and if you're applying those sprays on other things, it might mean you need to mix it differently. So I am gonna go spray that little dwarf peach tree because it's still in the container exactly where I showed it to you last time. Um, so we'll take care of that today. But the next round of spray that these trees will get is more of a contact spray. It will um, take care of any insects that are trying to attack the tree in the season, um, which typically we wait till the blooms have dropped. So we're not um, 
inadvertently spraying honeybees. Uh, and so we can take care of, you know, any aphids or things like that that come in later on. What are you doing? Kicking dust. You kicking dust? That's a good thing to do, buddy. Oh yeah. We just wanted to come out and see what you're doing. I just finished spraying these trees. Oh, did you? You do want to choose a nice still day to spray and the breeze is just starting to pick up. It was still when I started to spray a little while ago, so I'm glad I got it done. All right, so I think we should head toward the chicken coop and get that last little peach tree sprayed. <laughs> All right, so here's that little peach tree. It had leaf curl this last year. It didn't really bear any fruit this last season. It's full of buds and it had so many peaches on it the year before. It's called a pixie miniature peach and they were really tasty and they were really quite good size. I didn't even thin any of them out and they really formed up nicely. But anyways, I'm gonna get that sprayed real quick. All right, that's all done. And I imagine that it'll stay here for a while. I'm not real sure what's gonna happen with this whole area, but um, it does get full sun here and it was happy here. So I kind of want to leave it. Uh, and I know that the pallet walkway is gonna be staying. So anyway, it'll be interesting to see how this area develops. And that is it for today's video. Just wanted to show you guys what I was doing with the fruit trees, what I was spraying at this time of year. And we will definitely make videos when I spray them again. We'll show you um, what I end up using. I'll probably go with some kind of like a neem or something like that for my in-season spray. Um, but we will try to capture as much of that for you guys as possible um, so you can see the whole progression of the orchard. I think I do need to do a little bit of pruning out there as well because some of the trees are quite thick even though they're small. And I wanna make sure to, from the beginning have these fruit trees be um, cared for properly pruned properly so that we don't get them because you know sometimes you get a tree or you you know buy a home that's got trees that are out of control or you kind of neglect your trees and let them get out of control we've all been there um, and it's a little harder to bring them back to what you want them to be so if we treat them right from the very beginning we should have a lot of success so anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one